This week on Supercars Talk, a new commentator, Mr. Mark Larkham, has been confirmed for the telecast this year. Simona is back at Indy. And Techno Team Sydney have actually confirmed their driver lineup for the year. Happy, happy news, everyone. Uh, this shouldn't have been a thing because it shouldn't have happened in the first place, but uh, Mark Larkham is back. Uh, apparently, it was an error of judgment getting rid of him. Well, no shit. Um, not the first time they've done it and probably not the last time they're going to make a stupid, stupid, stupid decision. Uh, but at least common sense has prevailed and we are going to see Mark Larkham this year. Let's hope that, uh, an announcement about, uh, Neil Crompton is very soon too. The bus driver Gary Jacobson has been confirmed as the second driver at Techno Team Sydney. Uh, so, I mean, he's used to driving those uh, second-hand 888 cars. That's all I'm going to mention about the quality of vehicles. Uh, you're going to be battling it out for the back road, pretty much. Um, apparently, he is an ideal fit for the team, uh, says Jonathan Webb. Uh, so that translated, that means he brought more money, money than Chris Pither did. Uh, interestingly, Chris, Prith, Chris Pither has turned around and said he still has the Coke money. Um, so if you had money and you were willing to drive that bag of shit last year, um, Obviously, your Coke money is not much Coke money, really. Um, Brad Jones Racing and Erebus are both looking for co-drivers. They could do with a bit of a budget prop up, especially the one that currently doesn't have a sponsor. And uh, speaking of that, uh, Tickford made a bit of an announcement this week that Ryko Filters has joined them for this season. Uh, di didn't see anything about whether they're continuing with Erebus or not, uh, but... Could that be another part of Erebus jumping ship? Speaking of people jumping the Erebus ship, uh, Mecca de Rossa, who was Anton Di Pasquale's engineer, uh, it, it had been announced that he was leaving the team. Uh, it was announced that he was leaving the team for an engineering job outside of motorsport. Uh, well, he's just been confirmed as Tim Slade's engineer at Team Cool Drive. So... Uh, yeah, I wonder if the outside engineering job was a bit of a safe face kind of story uh, coming out of Erebus or whether it was true and maybe this opportunity came up and he decided to take it. Uh, but he, usually, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. And on the subject of Team Blanchard Cool Drive, whatever they're deciding to call themselves, uh, they're already talking about running a two-car program, possibly as early as next year, uh, all tied in with Gen 3 regulations coming in. Uh, obviously, they probably their biggest hurdle, other than money and everything, is getting licenses, which seems to be a bit of a problem. Maybe people might be more happy about it because then if Tickford gets another license and they get another license, it's two more cars on track. So the whole pit thing continues to work out, which I have heard was a bit of the stumbling block this year. More than Tickford running the license for no money, people were unhappy about the whole pit lane setup thing where then someone was running around, you know, with their own pit bay while everyone else then has to share a boom. And yeah, um, it's if that's the reason, it's not like the Slade car is probably going to be in the championship hunt. So it probably isn't going to full on affect championship. And as for the team's championship, everyone else has got two cars. So they're pretty much going to end up last in the team's championship anyway. Uh, Although, if you do look back the last few years, a, a couple of the teams have made it look very ordinary scoring points. Uh, but, yeah, okay, 
they're talking about two cars possibly as early as next year. Let's hope that some licenses become available and it's not just a, a switching of licenses between people and we don't see the car count go up. Uh, I would love to see more cars on track rather than, you know, less or the same amount. We want more people. Walkinshaw Andretti United have announced their big sponsorship lineup for the year. And surprise, surprise, it is appliances online and middies on each of the cars. No surprises for guessing which is on which car. And Mobile One will be across both of the cars like last year. So I guess you expect slightly disappointing paint jobs again from them. No co-driver announcements this week, but I have heard some rumours. Uh, apparently an old flame could be reunited at uh, Kelly Grove Racing. Uh, Luke Yulden, who retired uh, from co-driving he's going to run a full-time Carrera Cup campaign this year in anticipation of having a Bathurst co-drive potentially with Dave Reynolds uh so maybe another one that uh has fallen victim to the uh Erebus uh exodus if that's yeah it's it's just been an exodus of people really uh I suppose he was the first domino to fall. Uh, the other one, IndyCar's schedule, I've, I haven't been keeping a close eye on any of the schedules. I haven't even written any of them in my calendar or anything yet this year because of what happened last year with everything shifting around. And as we've already seen, um, granted the supercars dates haven't changed, but we have already seen going from Albert Park to Sandown uh, and obviously Albert Park being moved. It's all fluid at the moment, uh, as, as with everything it seems to be at the moment. The, you know, you wake up one day and the rules are a bit different to the next. Um, so, apparently, the IndyCar schedule changing if the current uh, quarantine restrictions stay, that Scott McLaughlin probably won't be able to race at Bathurst. So, I have heard that it could be, once again, an all-Davison team uh, in that number 17 and uh, Alex has been signed as a potential replacement for only if Scott can't get back into the country but he's sat there waiting uh, obviously no official announcement on that and potentially there won't be an announcement unless Scott can't come into the country there won't be an all-in test at Sydney Motorsport Park to kick off the year like was planned uh, due to the quarantine restrictions at the moment uh winton and queensland raceway are going to be holding tests on feb 12 and feb 16 uh the first one being at queensland raceway and then uh, the second one being at winton unfortunately these aren't open to the fans at all uh something about crowds and covid restrictions uh, <laughs> so the people are complaining about it the issue is the getting in and out of Sydney at the moment. I think Sydney Motorsport Park is part of the red zone or whatever they're calling it. So then if you go in there, you've got to then quarantine for 14 days to get out, which would probably affect the start of the championship. It's different. Bathurst is further away, kind of more country-based. So they're out of the restriction area. So that seems fine at the moment. Um, obviously the Queensland teams will go and test at Queensland Raceway. The Victorian teams will go and test, uh, at Winton, uh, Brad Jones racing. They will test at Winton cause they're actually the closest team to Winton and, uh, team Sydney, who cares? Uh, they, they're going to go to Queensland Raceway, uh, because they've actually, uh, Fabian Coulthard, their lead driver. And his, uh, Jeff Slater, who is the engineer for Fabian Coulthard, he, they both live in Queensland. So it's easier for the team to go up to Queensland and quarantine before or whatever they've got to do uh, than those guys come into Sydney and get stuffed up or, you know, maybe them travel down to Mel. And it just apparently the Queensland makes more sense. And Techno's also still got their factory up in Queensland that they can use after the test. And final news this week, Simona Di Silvestro is back in an IndyCar. Uh, this it, it will kind of be a Penske-run car, but it is all part of the race for quality and change. Um, and 
part of me had a little bit of a giggle because, um, you, you know, everyone, this all kind of, we race as one Formula One thing and all that kind of kicked off last year with the whole Lewis Hamilton BLM kind of thing kicking off. Um, and yeah, this, everyone, all the people against this equality stuff, they were saying, oh, it's all about BLM and rah, rah, and whatever. And then the the first driver to get essentially signed on this program is a female who's already been racing there, uh, which to me is great. Um, I like that our sport is inclusive and I had a little bit of an issue with the W Series thing because that then drags women aside. What it has done, though, is I think it's Alice Powell, uh, who is an extremely good driver that, you know, it has highlighted that she's extremely good and should probably move into a proper drive somewhere. Uh, and it probably highlights that some of the others, like, say, Carmen Jorda, are hopeless and shouldn't be anywhere near a racetrack. Uh, a bit like, you know, uh, homegrown, um, I was going to call it Pornhub, uh, whatever, OnlyFans uh, star Renee Gracie. Um, yeah, it kind of gets highlighted that they're not quite as talented, but then you've got, you know, like Simona or Leanne Tander or whatever who, you know, definitely can hold their own against uh, their male counterparts. So anyway, Simona gets to race at at least Indy this year in what will be a Penske car, which is great news uh, because th that's the other thing as well. People knock her results, but when you look through who she was driving for and even she had a bit of a shot at Andretti at the time, uh, but they weren't the Andretti that they've been, uh, the, you know, Penske and Ganassi have generally been, you know, kind of like your, your triple eight and um, DJR at the moment kind of thing where, you know, you're always up the front. Whereas I suppose Andretti's had a bit more like a Tickford kind of thing where they're, you know, a bit up and down over the years where they have some really good years and they have some ordinary years and that in between. And yeah, she was definitely the, the few times she drove for them wasn't in, you know, one of those top line kind of years. Um, but yeah, and I probably shouldn't be spending uh, so much time covering IndyCar in a supercars kind of chat thing. But this is going to happen this year uh, with Scott McLaughlin over there. And, you know, we've got Will Power and Scott Dixon as well that as, uh, you know, as, as much as when they're in supercars, they're New Zealanders. When they go overseas, you know, we all race as one pretty much. We kind of claim the New Zealanders a bit as our own and cheer, cheer them on. Uh, so anyway, Simona gets to race in IndyCar this year. So that covers off everything for this week. Uh, big shout out, as another little milestone for the channel. Uh, we've cracked 400 subscribers. Uh, it doesn't sound like much in the grand scheme of things when you think some of these channels have got like a million subscribers and stuff. Uh, but uh, I, I still can't believe that so many of you uh, come and view and listen to me each week. So thanks very much for that. Uh, the, t the typical kind of thing, uh, comments down below, whatever, Instagram and uh, email down there. Like and subscribe the videos. I think that's been helping because the views have been up. Um, yeah, get get the word out. And um, if I can get to that thousand subscribers, I can monetize and maybe buy some better equipment and like lighting so this doesn't reflect like hell rather than just using my old work lights and things like that. But anyway, until next time, I'm still Dave and I'll catch you later.